How's it going everyone? Dr. Ben here, your internet doctor dad that cares about you. And yes, the background might look a little bit different because I am recording my first video in my new office space. The office is still getting a little bit together, but um, we're at a point now where I can start making videos again on my informational videos uh, for y'all to learn things from. So I've been meaning to make the topic of this video for a while now, and it is on a posture training if you are someone who's transmasculine, just worrying about your chest, and or if you've been binding for a very, very long time, because the way that our dysphoria works, especially if you have chest dysphoria, if you're a transmasculine person with chest dysphoria, we tend to do these adaptive behaviors that is very, very harmful to our posture. And because of how the world has restructured itself, um, it can attenuate bad posture among us. And as we get more and more bad habits from bad posture, it can lead to permanent changes in our body, permanent way, uh, changes in how we see ourselves, but also it can cause functional problems over time as we get older. So this video is about how we can train our minds out of that despite having dysphoria, despite having to rely on a binder for those who haven't gotten top surgery or those who don't desire top surgery or just testing out a binder um, to see if they like it. So the main issue that I'm going to be talking about as far as posture change detriments to your posture after binding or you know making these adaptive changes because we're self-conscious about our bodies and our chest is um, this condition called kyphosis. So uh, it's just a fancy term for someone who has an arch on their back after years, years. Some people are born with a little bit of kyphosis. I was born with a little bit of kyphosis, but as we make these maladaptive behavioral changes to kind of deal with our dysphoria and by wearing a binder, which ultimately pulls down your, your chest, it pulls it down to make it look more masculine because of the tightness of the binder, it will pull it down. If you wear sports bras, the same thing will happen as well, but to a lesser degree. But kyphosis is the natural arching of your back over time. And we see this among older folks, but um, it's not something that's solely um, uh, solely attached to older folks. Anybody at any age can get kyphosis. We're seeing now and now more people showing these changes in their spine, in their back posture because of having to sit down on a desk and work from a computer all day. Um, looking down at a phone can also elicit these harmful postural changes in your body. So uh, I want to cover some exercises that I've done over the years because um, growing up, chest dysphoria was my biggest dysphoria. It made me feel like absolute garbage having to go around the world with um, breast tissue, um, feminine presenting breast tissue, and I always used to hunch my back. I used to hunch my back so much growing up. My classmates used to uh, jokingly call me an arched back or a hunch back. Um, Yes, it's bullying, but even my friends did it. They were just joking and told me to stand up straighter. My parents, my twin sister, my brother, all of them used to joke that I had a hunchback because I would actively scrunch over to hide my chest. And there were so many times where my mom would straighten my back up while I was walking in public with her, going grocery shopping or to the mall. Also, when I first uh, started to realize that I was transmasculine and a trans man, I really got into working out, working out heavily, going to the gym every single day. And I see this in cis people too, uh, people who go to the gym and want to bulk up. The first thing they do, if they have no experience on exercise science, is they start doing exercises for their upper body that focuses on the front muscles, the chest, the biceps, the shoulders. When you strictly, strictly focus on those muscles and don't put a lot of emphasis on your back muscles, it, those muscles are going to harden and they're also going to pull your back forward, leading to this kyphosis look. There's been so many guys, so many people I've seen at the gym who their physique is amazing, but they literally have no back or rotator cuff muscle strengthening exercises into their regimen. And I see them developing kyphosis. So this video is helpful for anyone regardless if you're trans or not but i do see um trans masculine people um having this issue more because of all of these things that influence the way that we stand up the way that we carry ourselves so before i had top surgery i binded for two straight years 
There was not a single day in my life where I went without a binder for at least eight hours of my day. So um, lesson number one is that please take breaks. I know binding is really, really helpful with alleviating dysphoria for a lot of people, including myself, but do not wear a binder for more than eight hours at a time. Give yourself a break throughout the day when you are not in front of other people. I almost always took my binder off as soon as I got home. I was single during my first year and a half on testosterone, so I didn't have anyone. I didn't have a partner that I was self-conscious about. I didn't care if my cat looked at me while I wasn't binding. So as soon as I got home after an eight hour school day, I took that binder off and made sure I did not put that binder back on until the next day where I was ready to go outside again. That gives my, my chest and my back some time to relax without a binder for the duration of the day to kind of mitigate that stress that I put on my body by compressing my chest. Tip number two is back strengthening exercises as I've talked about. Do those exercises that you need to do to make sure that your back muscles are uh, keeping up with your front muscles. So you do not need a gym membership to do any of these back muscle exercises. You can even go on YouTube and look up physical therapy for back, um, back muscles and uh, look at the videos that um, they show you, but I'll show you some examples of back muscle training I've done. All you need really are some resistance bands. If you have access to a gym, I use the cable pulley system to use it, but uh, the most effective exercises you can do are your rotator cuff muscle exercises and face pulls. Face pulls strengthen your upper back muscles and your rotator cuff muscles. So I'll be demonstrating on how to do them now. Tip number three for helping you improve your posture as you bind and go throughout your day with chest dysphoria is to stand up straighter. Just subconsciously stand up straight. Um, when you're at your desk, sit up with your back straight. It is something that we tend to lax over time, but take those first couple of weeks to be very, very subconscious about how are you sitting? How are you standing? How are you carrying yourself out into the wild? Um, this is something that doesn't come easy. I can't really even give very good advice. It's just that every time I subconsciously was like, oh my God, I am hunching my back over. I opened up my chest again. I got a, a monitor riser for my desk because monitor risers allow you to look at the monitor screen that you're working with, um, with a straighter neck. So um, I highly, highly recommend these daily little changes to fix your posture. And nowadays, when I go out, uh, I actually had a friend tell me, hey, Ben, uh, we were going on a walk and she was like, Ben, your posture is so good. I don't know how you've done it, but little does she know, four years ago, my posture was absolutely terrible. And this is my fourth piece of advice is that you can invest in something called a back uh, straightener. It's like this backpack strap looking thing that you can get on any website. But what it does is that when you're at your desk, when you're going around, you wear it under your clothes. I, I wore mine for two months and then I stopped using it because then I realized I was naturally because I was always so self-conscious about how I was presenting myself when I was walking around after my top surgery in that after using it as a bit of a crutch, I stopped using it and completely relied on my own um, sense of awareness to get me by and eventually you do it so often when you walk around you won't ever have to think about it nowadays when I go out when I go out into the outside world I don't, I'm never really thinking about keeping my back straight because my back is always straight I am always um, I've learned to adapt myself to carry myself this way permanently and the last piece of advice that I have for everyone, which I've been doing the last two years ever since I've had top surgery, is that if you build enough upper body strength to hang from um, bars, hang from a bar for at least one minute, three times a day. It allows you to lengthen your spine. It actually makes you get a little bit taller, just a little bit, not too much. But if you already have a little bit of arching in your back, it'll help you straighten out that back. And the benefit is that you get a little bit taller. I used to be 5'2 before testosterone and I had all these bad postural behavior changes. But once I fixed them, I'm, I'm now 5'3 because I hang from a bar. I fix my back. My bike is no longer arched as much as it can not be arched. And yeah, I'm just super, super happy with the changes I've made in myself to improving myself. And I hope this advice helps you out as well. Anyways, y'all, that's all I have for this video. I hope you gained some valuable information, some valuable exercises to do at home to help 
fix your posture, be more self-conscious about how you present yourself to the world so that you walk out there as a beautiful transmasculine individual with confidence. Everyone's going to look at you in the room and think, wow, they are so hot because that's what you are. Anyways, um, um, please share this information with someone who may benefit from it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my activism work and daily life. And I'll see y'all in the next video. And uh, yeah, welcome to my new apartment in Durham, North Carolina. Mwah. This is Dr. Ben.